Uh, not yet. There should be like a little camera. Can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly. Yeah, we're just we're missing the video. Uh, let me see. Should be down right below uh, where you see us. There should be like a camera with a red line through it. If you click on that camera, it should turn on the video. Thank you. Ah, there we go. How are you? Perfect. Good. Now I need to ask you, how do you say your last name correctly? Coelho. We don't have the L H sound in the English language. Okay, so Coel. Coelho. Okay, so I am going to do my best to try to say that. I'm not going to promise anything now. Uh, I have with me my group of third graders who are here to ask you some questions, and they are going. Go ahead, say hi. Hi. <laughs> They're going to uh, introduce themselves, and then we're going to ask uh, some questions. Is that okay? Yep. Okay. Go ahead. So, got uh, introduce yourself. My name is Anthony. Anthony. What type of leader is there in Brazil? Do you guys have a president or a different type of leader? We have a president. In fact, she is a woman, and she is the first uh, president, you know, a woman president that happened in Brazil history. Her name is Dilma Rousseff. Now, uh, is it the same kind of electoral process that goes on in the United States? Do people nominate and then vote for the uh, president in Brazil? It is. It is very similar to here. However, vote over there, we are obligated to vote. It's not like here that you choose to vote or not. Over there, we have to vote. Oh, okay, excellent. Now, uh, do they serve for the same number of years, four years in the term? Four years, yes. Excellent. Go ahead, let me do that. What is the typical day in your school? So what is a typical day like in a Brazilian elementary school? Well, over there, schools have a different schedule than here. Uh, we have like two shifts. Uh, we we'll start, let's say, from 7.30 to 12.30 or to 12, and then from 1 to 5. Uh, there is a new thing in Brazil now that they started having longer days, like we have over here, but it's not official yet. So you would choose to go to school, let's say, in the morning or in the afternoon. Uh, so, okay, excellent. Now. If you went to school in the morning, typically would you go home at lunchtime and then you would stay home for the rest of the day? And then yeah. Okay, good. Excellent. Go ahead. What subjects do you learn about in school? What are some of the subjects that children learn about in the Brazilian schools? Uh, the curriculum there is pretty similar to here. Uh, you would learn science and math and language arts and physical education and history and social studies and also a language. Um, usually it's English or Spanish. Some schools have English and Spanish. That was, uh, that was very interesting to us when we did the research because Brazil is one of the only countries in South America that doesn't speak Spanish. That is not their official language. That's right. Some people we still don't know that in Brazil we don't speak Spanish even though it's South America. We are the only country in South America that don't speak Spanish. We speak Portuguese. Excellent. I mean, how are you taught another language in school? Yeah, so now in schools, what, at what age do t students typically start learning another language? Um, I would say around fifth grade or so. Maybe a little earlier, because in Brazil we have private schools and public schools. Private schools, they tend to teach things um, a little different. So depending on the school, they might start learning a second language a little earlier, maybe in third or fourth grade, but not, yeah, about that. Excellent. Now, do you learn about different cultures and countries in school? Being that you're in South America, you might be bordered by a few more countries than we are in the United States. So do you learn about the cultures that are neighboring uh, in the countries around Brazil? We do. We learn a lot about the other countries, as you said, because of the borders. Uh, Brazil borders with every country in South America except Chile and Ecuador. So we do learn about their cultures, not just uh, uh, South America countries, but Brazil, especially uh, towns like Sao Paulo, is a big, big town, very much like New York. So we do have people there from so many parts of the world. We have Asian people. 
we have the people from uh, a lot of people from the Middle East. So we do learn about their cultures. Maybe not so in a deep uh, uh, investigation like here, because uh, um, it's a little different. Like we wouldn't have that structure that schools have over here when having uh, kids from another country. It's not so well organized the way it is here in the United States because it doesn't happen so often the way it happens here. But we do study about the other cultures there as well. Excellent. So here's a great question. What do kids do for fun in Brazil? Um, I would say that it's pretty close to here. Uh, we play sports, we go to the movies, we um, go to the mall. Um, before, when I used to be a kid, we would spend more time, let's say, going to a neighbor's house, uh, having play dates, or even playing on the streets was safer before. Right now, depending where you live in Brazil, not so much. And before, kids didn't have as many technology as you guys have today. So before, people would, like kids, would spend more time playing outside. Uh, over there in Brazil, the weather is much Better, not better, but very different from here. I mean, we don't have that tough winter that we have, so kids spend a lot of time out. Excellent. And a, a good part, there's a good part of Brazil that, that has coastline as well, so I can imagine that a lot of children go to the beach as well. Yes, yes, like a very uh, famous town, let's say Rio, you know, is like there is beach over there all over, so that's one thing that, especially during the weekend, is a very common thing. You spend your entire day at the shore, you know, at the beach. Excellent. Number seven. So here in the United States, it's kind of a rite of passage, and a lot of kind of uh, children look forward to going to you know a special place, whether it be the Grand Canyon or Disney World, or even you know locally Great Adventure. Is there a place like that in Brazil that children look forward to as they grow up to visiting? Uh, Brazil has beautiful um, tourist sites over there. I don't think I can name one special one. I guess depending more where you come from. Let's say in Rio, if you're from Rio, you would visit the Cristo Redentor. That's the biggest statue of the Christ over there with the arms wide open. I'm sure you guys have seen that on postal cards or something. Yeah, or if you come from the south where I come from, we have the Iguazu Falls, it's much bigger than the Niagara Falls, and they have a beautiful park over there. So that was a place that they always wanted to visit, you know, and like I said, it's from the state that I come from. I think it depends more uh, on what, uh, the place that you come from. You're from, if you're from Bahia, which is northeast, uh, that was the very first place that the Portuguese people came. This is the first place that they discovered. So but there they have beautiful sites too. And some kids, they really like to go to the soccer stadiums, as you know, because soccer is very popular there. So I guess it depends on the place that you live. So in the United States, uh, the family meal is typically dinner time. We all gather around the table, talk about our day. It's kind of that time to kind of come together as a family. In Brazil, do you have a meal that's similar to that? Uh, and what is it like? Uh, dinner is very important there too, but I would say lunch as well. As I mentioned before, we don't spend lunch at school. So family gets together during lunch time too. Even uh, dad and mommy, even if they work outside, in Brazil, they have a different schedule. Most of the places, not every place, it's getting different also, but most of the places they have lunch hours, so they go home to have lunch. Just if you leave it too far. But most of the families, they get together during lunch time and also during um, dinner time. Perfect. Hi, my name is Karen. Hey. Uh, what are some special activities you do during your holidays? So. We just passed Christmas and New Year's here in the States. Do you have any special traditions in Brazil to kind of celebrate those holidays? I would say that Christmas is the most uh, traditional holiday there in Brazil. We are a very Catholic uh, country. Most of the people there, that's the main religion there. So Christmas is very, very important for all of us. And uh, again, it's a time pretty much like here when, you know, family and friends get together 
is is I would say that it, for me it's better than here because of the weather. Since <laughs> over there Christmas is summertime, so it's different. Now, are there any unique Brazilian holidays that you would celebrate if you lived in Brazil and that you wouldn't celebrate here in the States? Uh, there is some religious... Um, actually, it's funny that you mentioned that because uh, uh, long ago, I don't remember exactly the date, but a saint was discovered in a, rio, in a river in Brazil and it's called Nossa Senhora Aparecida and it's a black saint. And it was discovered, uh, uh, they found it on October 12th. And this is also the day of the kids. So this is a unique holiday in Brazil. October 12th, we celebrate Kids Day and also Nossa Senhora Aparecida's Day, which is so, so special for Brazilians. So it's a big holiday there that day. Excellent. Now, I know a lot of the kids have... have seen carnival in in the movie rio is it that big of a cultural and country holiday in brazil yes carnival is uh one of the most important things about brazil so many people when you mention brazil you think about carnival and soccer uh i guess it's the only country that celebrates the way we do it's a big big deal over there it's like a three days uh party uh i guess you guys have seen on tv we have uh, those big uh, um, samba schools, and they get these huge, very elaborated customers with uh, their music, and there's a huge competition among themselves, and they spend the entire year just working very hard on that, and it's a beautiful, beautiful thing they do every year. It's in, uh, um, I'm sorry, in the end of February, beginning of March, it depends on the calendar. Excellent. Are there any boys or customs that restrict boys or girls from doing certain things in your country? Are there any laws or customs that prevent boys and girls from doing the same thing? Or has uh, equality among genders kind of been uh, taken over in, in Brazil? I don't think uh, that is anything like prohibited like boys or girls. We are very equal over there. We can all do the same boys and girls. I can't recall anything. I mean, times have been changing for the better, thank goodness. But um, yes, we're pretty much equal. Excellent. What are responsibilities of children in their households? So what are the what are children responsible for in the household? What would some daily chores be like for kids? I would say pretty much like here, like basically helping with uh, to keep up the house clean, doing you know your bed, clean up your room, helping with the dishes. However, in Brazil. Um, they leave the kids by themselves in any younger age than here. They give more responsibilities to the kids than they do in here. Let's say if you are, like you guys are what, eight or nine, you would be able already to stay maybe, you know, a few minutes by yourself at home and doing some things, you know, by yourself. There is no so much concern like here. We give more responsibility to the kids at an earlier age than here. What Olympic sports are most popular in your country for the upcoming Winter Olympics? Well, let's first ask, does Brazil have any teams participating in the Winter Olympics? I think we have, for the very first time, some athletes that will play in the, Olymp the Winter Olympic Games. And I was watching the news the other day. I didn't even know about this sport. It's like a skateboard on the snow. And I know that we have very good skateboarders over there, the players, and I know they're going to compete on the Winter Olympic Games now. But we are not very, very popular on the Winter Games yet. However, for the summer, you guys are very popular. Yes. Espe <laughs> especially in football and, uh, and um, well, for soccer, that's what they, yeah, in Brazil they call it for football. And uh, I know, personally, from being a soccer fan, that you have a huge event coming up this summer in Brazil, correct? Yes, uh, we're going to host the, the Cup, the World Cup in Brazil, and we will start on June 12th until July 12th, and we are preparing very hard for that. And yes, soccer is our number one sport over there. But we are also very popular in other sports when it comes to the Olympic Games, like we're very good in volleyball, uh, basketball, our swim team is also really good. We are becoming really good at the gymnastics, and um, some martial arts too. Excellent. Yeah. Hi, my name is Jack. Hey. Has your cousin ever hosted an Olympics? 
Now, has Brazil ever hosted an Olympics? No, it's going to be our first time in 2016. And that will be for the Summer Games, correct? Yes. Good. So how are laws created in Brazil? That's a tricky question, I know. Yes, it's kind of hard to explain. We have like a, a house of the Congress that has, let's say, two houses. One is with the senators, like here, and the other one is with the, the, the how do you say, deputies? Uh, yeah, like the deputies, the, yep. Right. So, for a law to pass and become, let's say, official, they have to vote. But the president also has the final approval. So, it's similar to here, a little different. But the president cannot create a law and say, okay, this is going to be the way I want. No. Um, let's say if she wants a law to be passed, the senators and the deputies, they have to vote in order to approve that. And they have to have the majority of the people agree on that law in order for it to take into effect. Exactly. Great. How much is it money? What type of money, what type of currency is used in Brazil? Uh, our money is named real, and um, I would say that a dollar worth is kind of uh, 2.5 reais, a little bit more than 2 reais. So if you have a dollar and you go to Brazil and you exchange it, you would have 2.5 reais around that. Sometimes it's 2.0, 2.4. I have a $20 bill over here and I have some coins. I'm going to get to show you guys. I, I hope I can show you. Yes, sure. I yes. just came from Brazil two weeks ago. <laughs> I'm sure the weather was a lot nicer there than it was here. <laughs> it was. I came back and I started having like... Um, on my knees and stuff because of the weather and uh, it's such a long flight that my my bones started hurting you know and then I'm sure two weeks ago when you landed that's when it was so cold here in the United up in this area of New Jersey it was it was terribly cold over there I mean over here so this is a $20 bill let me see if you can see can you see that yep yep so that would worth the then, um, how much? Like I said, it's like $10, a little less, and I have some coins in here. This is one hell, this is 50 cents, 10 cents. Now, on your paper currency, what's usually uh, depicted on there? Is it usually a liter? What's usually the pictures that are on there? Now, we, those uh, reais, they're kind of new. They changed the, the paper money over there. And what they are honoring are animals from the rainforest. So on the $20 bill, I don't know if you can see that, but you have uh, what we call Mico Leão Dourado. It's like a little monkey from the rainforest. Excellent. <laughs> That's very, you know, it's funny. We spoke to Costa Rica earlier uh, or late last week, and that was similar. They do have political figures on the front of their bills, but they have also replaced the back of their bills with all, all animals from the rainforest. Yes, yes. It's okay. very beautiful. Now, do you guys have any questions? Go ahead, Anthony. Uh, do you have Boy Scouts there? That's a great question. Are there, like, clubs for uh, boys that are in the elementary level? Like, we would have Boy Scouts or Cub Scouts here. Do they have similar things like that in Brazil for children? They do. As I mentioned before, uh, I would say that one of the biggest problems in education in Brazil is that we don't have the same quality that we have over here for private and public schools. Over there is kind of the opposite over here. Good schools are private. So for you to go to a good school, your parents would have to pay for that. So that school, they would offer so many clubs, so many activities, so many things for you guys to do. On the other hand, if a mom and daddy did not have much money and you would need to go to a regular public school, depending on the school, they wouldn't offer so much, you know, because that would be for free. And unfortunately in Brazil, um, still, you know, depending on where you live, you would need the money to have a better education. Go Do you have traditional clothing you wear in Brazil, or do pretty much people dress similar to how it is in the United States? Uh, we would dress similar than here, a little bit more um, short. <laughs> like in Brazil, uh, since the weather is very good, like I said, we wear shorts and mini skirts and uh, shirts that 
show maybe your belly button on a regular day. You know, you can go to the supermarket or to a store wearing that and nobody will look at you and say, uh, why you don't have your clothes on today? Because it's kind of normal. Let's say in Rio, like I said, is a town that uh, people go to the beach, as I said, uh, um, every day. So you're wearing your bikini and from there you can walk into a store, into a cafe and it's fine. It's completely fine. Um, what are the most popular foods in Brazil? That's a great question. What are the most popular foods in Brazil? Uh, rice and beans. We call feijão com arroz. Excellent. Uh, you, I'm sorry, you said food or fruits? Uh, foods. Oh, yes. That's uh, one of the most popular. Now, what about for like a meat dish? Would there be like a traditional uh, Brazilian meat dish that you would have as well? Uh, we have things that are very traditional, also people know very well over here, we call feijoada. It comes from the slaves. Uh, Brazil had the slaves, and uh, since the slaves couldn't eat the good food as their owners would eat, they would get the beans, and um, the slaves would get the rest of the pork. They would, uh, I mean, their owners would have the good parts of the pork meat, but they would let it go the feet, the ears, the tail, and the slaves would cook that with the beans. But since the beans cooked with that kind of meat is heavy because of all the fat that pork has, they would eat that with the collard greens and the oranges. So that became a very popular dish in Brazil. It was called feijoada. Excellent. Excellent. Anthony. Is there a different time changes? Great question. Is there a different time change between uh, here in New Jersey and Brazil? Uh, Brazil is just two hours ahead of us. Uh, right now it's like three hours because we have summertime over there and it's like a daytime savings. So we are one uh, actually three hours ahead of uh, us right there. Yeah. Oh, that's a great question. Uh, which country founded Brazil? Portugal. Portugal, and that's why they're one of the only countries in South, the only country in South America that speaks Portuguese. Yeah, great question. Any other questions? No? All right. Raquel, thank you so much. This was absolutely fantastic. Uh, great interview. I think the kids got a lot out of it, and uh, their projects are going to come out fantastic. All right. Let me know, guys. What do you say? Thank you. Oh, one more question. Go ahead, Anthony. Is there some famous artists? Does Brazil have any very famous artists or sports players, people that might be known worldwide? Well, Pelé is a very famous soccer player because he's the only soccer player that has played the three World Cups and won them. So he became uh, what they call king of soccer. He is, uh, I just went to a sub restaurant yesterday and I had my little girl with me and she saw a picture of him. And she said, look, man, Pelé. So he's very famous. Um, I would say that he's one of the most uh, famous Brazilians. He's a celebrity. He's a very humble guy, a very great guy. He does a lot for sport in Brazil. Excellent. All right. Thank you so much. No oh, problem. My pleasure. Bye, guys. Have a good week. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. All right. Great job. Pretty good stuff, huh? Oh, yeah. Taught you guys a little bit more. Can we, can we talk? I have a friend that pays them, actually.